Okay, so where did I just leave off? Sorry, we had to do two videos today. And I'm going to start all over, and we're going to be reading in Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. Alright, so Ephesians 3, we'll start at 14. Again, I know I had already read some of this, but maybe we need to read it again. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be being rooted and grounded in love. May may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth understand knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God and so this says to please note Paul wasn't asking in prayer that the Ephesian believers would receive their abundant inheritance of spiritual riches blessings power and authority but that they would realize it was also already theirs. As Christians, they already possess these things, just as we do. But until they realized it, what good could it accomplish? What benefit would all of God's gifts be to them if they weren't aware they'd be give, been given anything, everything? I can't read today, y'all. Needed to send the enemy running for cover. In reality, the spiritual armor in Ephesians 6 is merely a repeat, a different way of describing what Paul had already been explaining to them in the first portion of the letter. How could they put on or take up things they didn't know they had? The first step for them, the first step for us in the using the spiritual resources we've already been given is to ask God to open our spiritual eyes so we can see them. The story of Elisha and the vision impaired servant in 2 Kings 6 is one of my absolute favorite stories in the Bible. The setting is a battle about to ensue between the enraged king of Aram and the nation of Israel. So let's look at it together. Open your Bibles to 2 Kings 6, 15 through 17. So let's go to 2 Kings. Verse 6, I mean, chapter 6, verse 15 through 17 says, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So, here the question says, what did Elisha's servants see when he woke up in verse 15? So if we go back to verse 15 and we look at it to see what he saw when he woke up. It says, When the servant of man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. So when he woke up, he seen horses and chariots. It says, Given his next action, in part of 15 and part of first part of 16, how would you describe the servant's emotional state at that point? And his servant said unto him, Elias, Master, how should we do? He answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than that that they be with them. So to me that tells me that most likely when he woke up, he was scared. That servant was scared. He was fearful. So let's look at Elijah's reaction in verse 16. Elisha, he answered him and told him to fear not, for they that be with us are with them. Are they that be with them? <clears throat> so how can we say that Elisha's prayer for his servant in 17 is similar to Paul's prayer for the Ephesians? Elisha's servant got an eyeful at first. The only thing he could see was the enemy. How many times have we been that way? How many times has something attacked us? And instead of us being that faithful person that we're supposed to be, and instead of us 
looking at God's grace and his mercy and trusting that he's going to protect us, we get fearful really, really quick. It's all part of us. We all do it. Not just the people here in the Bible. It's us every day. We all look at things differently. It says, at first, the only thing he could see was the enemy, which likely left him with no other response than fear and anxiety. But then he learned a game-changing spiritual reality. More power was at his disposal in working on his behalf than he could ever imagine. What his physical eyes could see was no match for what they couldn't see. Elisha's prayer helped make him aware of all the resources and strength on his side fighting against the enemy. To be confident and victorious, you've got to be able to see it. Or you've got to be able to see. You've got to be able to see what's going on behind the scenes. So it says, take inventory of some riches given to you in Christ, which below you can pin down the enemy. Write the key words from each verse below. When you've completed the list, read it out loud. So I'm going to leave that for y'all to do. So you need to go through. There's um, four different sets of scriptures here. And you need to read them and write down key words that pop out to you in them scriptures. So let's hit pause for a minute. Let's think about those gifts. Then realize that these are on are only the gifts Paul accentuated in one chapter. There are many, many more. And each of us connect. Each one connects specifically with your spiritual armor and weapons. But the first key to understanding how they all fit into your ability to pin down the enemy visually, you cannot use these gifts if you're not able to fully recognize them. If you're not aware that they're available to you or don't understand how important they are in successfully waging war against the enemy of this world and your soul. Victory starts here. It starts today. We laid things down yesterday. We started a clean slate yesterday with Jesus. But victory of ours is ours. And it starts today. It starts with this. A prayer for vision. So join Paul in asking the Lord to open your eyes more fully throughout these next six weeks. So you can not only detect the enemy's activity. But can also become fully aware of the tools that God has given you to disarm and defeat him in your life. So that is the end of day one. Tomorrow, I will do another video and send it to y'all, and we'll do day two. But as we end this, I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going to pray that God opens our eyes and that he will give us the tools and the strength to know exactly what we need to do to fight against the enemy every day when he comes against us. So, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to do this lesson and to learn more from you, God. We pray and ask you to open up our eyes and our hearts and let us see visually, Lord, what you're doing behind the scenes for us. We pray that you open our eyes and hearts that we will know what to do to defeat the enemy so that we can live in victory every day and live victorious just as you've made us to do, God. You don't want us to be defeated. You don't want us to live in fear. You don't want us to live with anxiety, but yet you want us to live victorious with our hands raised high, God. And you want us to fight that enemy full-fledged just like David fought the giant. Lord, we can do this and we have to know that through you all things are possible and we can do it together, God. And Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that whatever it is that they laid down on that circle, God, that's bothering them, Heavenly Father, that they would know that that is not the real enemy. The real enemy is Satan, and he is underneath our feet, and he is not coming back to bother us. But when he does, we're going to go to battle with you by our side, Jesus, so that our enemies can flee just the way that Miss Shire's sons fleed when their dad showed up. Because you are a dad, Lord. You are our Heavenly Father, but you can be our earthly father here to help us, too. We thank you for the th these things, and we love you in your name. Amen. I love you guys. I hope y'all have enjoyed this.